From the origin of surgical masks to the incredible and exciting story of how M&Ms are made, here are several things you didn't know. M&Ms are one of the world's most beloved candy brands. Do you know how the idea of these popular chocolate candies came about? Let's find out. The history of M&Ms created about 100 years ago is surprising. The M&M's brand owes its origins to the American businessman Forrest Edward Mars. In the 1930s, he was on a trip to Spain. At the time, the country was in the grip of a civil war. Forrest Mars hung out with American soldiers and he made a simple observation. These soldiers were eating a chocolate mixture, which did not melt under the sun because it was covered with a sugar shell. From that moment on, the idea of offering hard sugar-coated candies on the market was born in his mind. These candies would not melt on the hands or pockets of soldiers. Back in the United States, he founded the M&M's brand, composed of the initial of his name and that of his partner, Mars and Maurice. American soldiers loved them, and they consumed a lot of them during the Second World War. At the time, the packaging was very different from what we know today. The candies were sold in cardboard tubes. Later, they were marketed on a large scale. M&Ms were so successful that competing brands began to imitate them. To overcome this, Forrest Mars thought of adding the M to the chocolate balls as a distinctive feature. Another fortunate event that helped Forrest Mars' invention was the rise of television in 1950. This allowed for great publicity and the M&M's brand became known to all Americans. Everything smiled on Forrest Mars, who knew how to make his idea prosper until the end. At the end of his life, his fortune was estimated at $4 billion. But one thing spoils this beautiful tale. The M&M's brand has been the subject of controversy in relation to the dyes that make it up. Of course, these have changed over the years. It is not as harmful as it used to be. But even today, M&M's contain chemical constituents that are known to cause cancer. For example, titanium dioxide, which makes the shell shine. But the danger of these elements does not justify a ban by the European Union. Indeed, the most harmful dyes have already been replaced in the past. And Forrest Mars' invention still has a long way to go. Now we'll talk about the most common and prized object in the world. The banknote. While paper money has a rich history, the way it is made is no less interesting. A word about its origin. It is widely believed that paper money was first used in China over a thousand years ago. These bills simplified transactions and saved merchants from carrying masses of heavy and precious objects. The basic purpose of banknotes has not changed since then. In modern and contemporary times, paper money was widely used. Even though its form and value have undergone enormous changes and developments, one thing remains unchanged. The official producers of banknotes want them to be durable and inimitable. For that, it is necessary to have a manufacturing process such that it is impossible for the private individual to reproduce these bills. If counterfeiting cannot be eradicated, it is at least possible to make the task of the counterfeiters extremely difficult. But first of all, what is the banknote made of? You might think it's paper, but in reality, it is almost exclusively cotton fiber. Fortunately, that's what gives them their strong texture. If the producers had used paper, the banknotes would not have lasted long. They would have been easily torn and discolored. Whereas today's firm, shiny banknotes have a long life. It can be folded a thousand times without tearing. There are several steps to making them. And it is much more complex than you think. It's a series of technical processes, from offset to silk screening, and includes special effect inks as a finishing touch. This is what makes the banknotes change color depending on the viewer's point of view. The precise details of the printing of the bills are kept secret, and counterfeiting is not for the faint of heart. But the eradication of counterfeit money is an unlikely dream. In 2018, for example, there were more than 20 billion counterfeit banknotes in circulation in the Eurozone, representing a value of more than a thousand billion. However, it could be worse if the design of the bills were not so complex. 
Sometimes, for no specific reason, you ask yourself questions about something. The questions arise spontaneously in your mind. You get curious about ordinary things. You leave through a car magazine and ask yourself, how are tires made? You want to know how this essential part of any vehicle is made. So, you do a little research and you discover that the subject is more interesting than you thought. The tire is made of more than 200 raw materials, the main one being, as you might expect, rubber. There is a natural rubber and synthetic rubber. The latter is the most important component. After these elements of elastic nature called elastomers, there are the reinforcing fillers. Among them is the element that gives tires their strength and black color, namely carbon black. But it also enters the composition of a tire, the silica, which ensures the adherence to the ground, as well as solvents and resin, metallic and textile elements. You wouldn't have guessed that a tire contains so many things. After all, it is a world of components, and each tire requires an extremely precise dosage, even though, of course, each manufacturer adds his own special touch. In short, the manufacturing process is a challenge for the industry. Thanks to all this information, you have satisfied your curiosity a little, and now you know a little more about the nature of the tire. School notebooks, which you may fill out on a daily basis, have a feature that you have become accustomed to the margins on each sheet. As you look at the pages of your notebook filled with notes, you wonder why there is always that space on the left side of each sheet. You'll want to get to the bottom of this mystery. In class, you take the risk of asking your teacher this perhaps silly question. You might think that the margins are there for you to write down dates for your classes or for teachers to write remarks. This is not the case. The origin of the margins is surprising. Your teacher is knowledgeable and knows the answer to this mystery. Margins on the side of sheets have been around since the Middle Ages. At that time, rats infested the city, and they were very numerous in the universities. They had an annoying tendency to nibble on the scraps of paper. This phenomenon was very detrimental to the preservation of writings. So, the blank space on the side was used to protect the handwritten notes, because the rats would devour the ends of the paper first. When you learn all this, you are surely surprised and amused. The practice of placing margins had no other use. Over the ages, this habit has been reinforced. Perhaps the margins were seen as an aesthetic thing, and it was decided to keep them. You certainly didn't expect this explanation about the origin of the margins of your notebooks. You have probably noticed that the buttoning of women's clothing differs from that of men's clothing. For example, men's shirts open to the right and women's shirts open to the left. This symmetry is quite curious. The origin of this distinction goes back to a relatively distant time. Yes, the button has a very ancient history. And it was first an aesthetic sewing element, before having the use we know today, namely the fixing of the garment. From the 13th century, buttons were used to hold the sleeves of shirts. And when shirts became fashionable, under the reign of Louis XIV, the button became a primary fashion element in the aristocracy. Buttons were sometimes embellished with jewels, a bit like luxury watches today. At that time, the noble ladies were dressed by servants, and it was more convenient for them that the bottoms were on their right. But would you say men of high ranks would also have valets? Louis XIV, for example, was dressed by several domestic officers. This is true, but most of the time, nobles and courtiers dressed themselves. Their valets were limited to preparing the clothes and adjusting the accessories. Today, for some reason, this practice has become a universal rule, respected by all designers. The mystery of separate buttoning, depending on whether the garment is male or female, is now dispelled. The computer keyboard is also one of the most familiar objects in your daily life. You know how to write with your eyes closed. So familiar is the layout of the keys. But do you know the reason for the distribution of the keys on the keyboard? 
we have to go back to the first typewriters. The keys were arranged in alphabetical order. Although this order seems logical, it had its drawbacks. When two adjacent keys were pressed too quickly, the metal rods that connected each one clashed. It was not convenient. It was therefore necessary to have as much distance as possible between the letters most often used side by side. Hence, the AZERT keyboard that we know today. If you think that the alphabetic keyboard would have been preferable, think again. Because in this case, you would use your left hand much more often than your right. This is the surprising origin of the AZERT keyboard. It is a solution of convenience, born from statistics. Wu Lin Te was a Malaysian-born physician, born in 1879, when the country was under the British colonial empire. He studied medicine and proved to be a very brilliant student. After graduation, he became a doctor and researcher and was very interested in dangerous pathologies. But his main interest was public health. He helped opium addicts by creating associations to fight against drug addiction. And while treating his patients, he was looking for the causes and cures of serious diseases such as beriberi. In 1910, he was called to Manchuria, an Asian territory, to study closely a terrifying and unknown disease that killed all those affected. It was the famous Chinese plague, which originated in Hong Kong and spread to all continents. If history has remembered the names of great scientists, whose enlightenment allowed to explain and fight this plague, Wu Liente has not inherited the same glory. Nevertheless, we must give him credit. Wu Liente was one of the first to establish this new fact. He had discovered, during an autopsy, that the pulmonary plague was transmitted by air. He therefore advised the government to adopt measures that we know very well today. For example, social distancing, quarantine and surface disinfection. Most importantly, he set out to develop a mask that would effectively protect patients and caregivers. At the time, the most common mask used was a single-layer face mask. Wu Liente added several layers to better filter the air. This progress allowed the design of today's masks. Through his generous and innovative work, Wu Liente saved thousands of lives. He was more than a scientist, he was a benefactor. He treated patients free of charge who came to his practice in great numbers. When the epidemic ended, his genius was hailed and recognized by his peers in China and around the world. However, during his life, and like all men of genius, he experienced small and painful injustices such as racism. After graduation, he was not allowed to hold prominent positions in the colonized territories that were reserved exclusively for the British. Later, when he knew how to prevent the plague and advised health workers, a French doctor laughed in his face and said, what can we expect from a Chinese? A final injustice was the oblivion that enveloped his scientific and humanitarian work. But the situation tends to be reversed. For the 142nd anniversary of his birth, Google honored his memory. This is the end of our video. You have been able to discover many amazing facts about objects that, although commonplace, have an interesting history that we would never have guessed. As usual, feel free to mention in the comment section your impressions. Which of these things you didn't know surprised you the most? If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel and activate the bell so you won't miss any of our next publications.